My husband's black colleague, Russell, picked me up and threw me onto the bed. He then lunged at me while my drunk husband lay on the nearby side, completely unaware of what was happening here. As I saw the imposing figure approaching, I felt both excited and scared. My husband, Lu Wei, who has been on a business trip for half a year, has returned to the country today. As the saying goes, absence makes the heart grow fonder. To give Jiang Yen a surprise, I got a box of a so-called powerful health supplement from my best friend. It's said to be extremely potent. I mixed it into the red wine, then covered the living room carpet with fresh flowers arranged in a large heart shape. After doing all this, I put on the carefully chosen sexy lingerie and lay down on the bed. Just thinking about Lou's reaction when he walks in makes me both excited and nervous. Oh my god, you won't believe what just happened. So there I am, all dolled up in this sexy little number, ready to surprise my hubby, right? And BM. The door swings open, and there's Lou, my man, standing there with his jaw on the floor. But get this, he's not alone. Next to him is this absolute unit of a black dude. I'm talking tall, dark, and holy moly. This guy's got dreadlocks and muscles for days, looking like a freaking grizzly bear next to my already tall hubby. But here's the kicker. This stranger just got a full-on peep show of yours truly. I screamed like I was in a horror movie, trying to cover up my goods. Lou rushes over, all annoyed, throwing his jacket over me like, what the hell are you wearing? I'm thinking, dude, I was trying to spice things up for you, you ungrateful jerk. I sneak a peek at Mr. Tall, Dark, and Handsome and catch him eyeing me like I'm a snack. Our eyes meet, and he flashes me this million-dollar smile. Talk about awkward. So I scurry off to change into something less, hello, sailor. When I come back out, my face is redder than a tomato. The guy introduces himself as Russell, Lou's co-worker. Get this, he hands me a bottle of perfume, all smooth-like, saying it's for a beautiful lady like me. I'm dying inside, but it does smell amazing, all jasmine wine and stuff. Just when I think things can't get any weirder, I notice Lou's wine glass is empty. Turns out Russell knocked it back. I'm freaking out, thinking this dude's gonna go crazy or something. And then he has the nerve to ask if I'm into him, cause I keep staring. I'm like, excuse me, but inside I'm screaming. We all sit down to eat, and after a few drinks, everyone loosens up. I find out Russell's been looking out for Lou overseas, so I decide to be nice and toast him. Big mistake. I take a swig and it's like I swallowed fire. I'm coughing and spluttering and wouldn't you know it, I spill booze all over my top. Now, this flimsy pajama top is not leaving much to the imagination when it's wet. Russell's eyes are about to pop out of his head and I'm scrambling to cover up. Talk about a dinner party from hell. I swear, you can't make this stuff up. I felt a strange heat and desire inside me. Just then, I felt a rough hand touching my leg under the table. It was Russell and I was startled. I looked up and glared at him. Russell smirked and not only did he not stop, but he continued. How could he be so bold? Was he actually going to laugh this off? I glanced awkwardly at Lou, unsure of what to say. What should I do? Should I tell him that I put something in the wine, which caused Russell to act this way? Russell's touch persisted. I bit my lip, trying to stop these embarrassing and unbelievable thoughts. What's wrong with me? Is it because I haven't been around men for so long? I shook my head vigorously, trying to clear the images from my mind. But I couldn't hold on any longer. I made an excuse about having had too much to drink and went to the bathroom. As soon as I entered, I saw Russell had followed me in through the mirror. I instinctively wanted to scream, but Russell covered my mouth with his hand and locked the door behind him. Don't wake him. We're both in trouble. In the mirror, Russell's towering figure almost completely enveloped me. In his bear-like embrace, I felt like a helpless little rabbit. He buried his head in my shoulder, his hot breath making me go weak. What do you want? I trembled, barely able to speak. You're the most beautiful Chinese woman I've ever seen. From the first moment I saw you, I fell in love with you, Russell said, speaking bold words of affection. He adjusted my head and covered my red lips with his large, alcohol-scented mouth. I opened my eyes wide, and he pressed my head firmly. The strong scent of the man made me dizzy. Soon, my hands unconsciously rested on his shoulders. Russell lifted me and placed me on the sink. At that moment, I heard Lou's unconscious moan from nearby. Honey, have another drink. 
I shoved Russell aside and rushed out of the bathroom. In the living room, Lou was completely passed out, lying on the table, snoring away. Wake up, honey. You'll catch a cold if you sleep here. Feeling guilty, I walked over and tapped Lou on the shoulder. Don't, don't touch me. I can still drink. Go ahead, drink. Lou mumbled incoherently, flailing his arms. He was clearly very drunk. There was no other choice but for me to take him back to the bedroom. However, I was too weak to lift Lou's heavy body. Reluctantly, I had to ask Russell for help. I can help you, but how will you repay me? Russell licked his lips, his gaze intense. Baby, I won't make it hard for you. Just put on that sexy lingerie from earlier and show it to me, and I'll help you. Deal? The thought of that lingerie made my face flush. It's just wearing a piece of clothing for him to see, not doing anything else. It should be fine, right? Thinking this, I reluctantly nodded. Russell didn't waste any time, picking up Lou and heading towards the bedroom. I hesitated for a moment, then quickly followed. Russell laid Lou on the bed and tossed me the discarded sexy lingerie, saying, Baby, hurry up and change. I can't wait. You, you go outside and wait, I said, lowering my head, too embarrassed to look him in the eye. Stop wasting time, hurry up and change. Russell said impatiently, his eyes bloodshot and looking extremely frightening. The effects of the drug had fully kicked in. I felt a shiver of fear and started unbuttoning the lingerie one by one. As soon as I had undone one button, Russell couldn't hold back any longer. He lunged at me, pinning me to the ground. I instinctively tried to scream, but as soon as I opened my mouth, Russell covered it with his own. A ferocity I had never experienced before slammed into my heart. I clung tightly to the edge of the carpet to keep from making a sound. Russell chuckled and said, Don't you think it's more thrilling to do this in front of your husband? His voice was seductive, luring me into a dark abyss. My consciousness began to slip away. It was truly a shocking night. When the sun came up, Russell was long gone. But, damn, he left his number on a freaking dollar bill. Talk about smooth, right? I'm holding this thing feeling all kinds of relieved, but also kinda disappointed. Weird, huh? I'm sneaking around like a cat burglar, scooping up my clothes and bolting to the bathroom. After I've scrubbed off the night's shenanigans, I slide back into bed with hubby. He's out cold, totally oblivious to the crazy shit that went down. I'm feeling guilty as hell, stroking his face when VM. My head starts pounding like a jackhammer. I'm thinking, Jesus, is this what they mean by karma? Just then, Lou wakes up, whining about being starved and craving some fried rice. I'm all, sure, babe, you just chill. I got this. I ask if he wants anything else, and he's just staring at me. Talk about awkward. He's all, you look different. Like, glowing. Did you find the fountain of youth or something? Any other day, I'd be over the moon, but right now? I'm freaking the hell out. So I'm in the kitchen trying to act normal, when Lou drops a bombshell, Russell's moving in next door. I'm internally screaming, thinking, oh crap, what if he starts hanging around? Lou's all casual about it, saying, no biggie, he'll look after you when I'm not around. If he only knew how Russell looked after me last night. Moving day rolls around, and Lou's Mr. Helpful, lugging boxes everywhere. Meanwhile, I'm playing this weird eye tag game with Russell. Every time we lock eyes, I'm having flashbacks to that wild night, and let me tell you, it's getting hot in here. Then, when Lou's not looking, Russell hands me this package. He's all a little gift for you, sis. Open it when you're alone, with this look that could melt steel. My heart's doing the cha-cha as I'm smuggling this thing to my room like it's contraband. Holy smokes, you guys. I open it up and it's full of the kinkiest lingerie you've ever seen. I'm sitting there, red as a tomato, thinking, what the hell have I gotten myself into? That night, I lied to Lou, saying I had to work late at the office and secretly sneaked into Russell's place. The moment we met, no words were needed. We understood each other perfectly. We turned off the lights and got down to business. Afterward, Russell and I set some ground rules. First, our encounters should not affect our respective families and lives. Second, there should be limits on how often and when we meet. Finally, and most importantly, pregnancy was a hard limit for me. Russell agreed to these terms. 
That night, I went wild at Russell's place and didn't leave until 2 a.m. Russell's intensity left me craving more. So, for the next few days after that wild night, I'm feeling kinda. I don't know, empty? Like something's missing, you know? Anyway, my bestie calls me up for a shopping trip, and the second she lays eyes on me, she's giving me this look. You know the one, that I know what you've been up to, look. I'm blushing like crazy, trying to play it cool. She's all proud of herself, saying, pretty good stuff, huh? It's flying off the shelves at my shop. And I'm thinking, oh honey, if you only knew. I'm getting flashbacks of Russell going absolutely bonkers that night, and it's freaking me out. I'm like, uh, is this stuff even legal? And she looks at me like I've grown a second head. Of course it is. It's just health supplements, not some kind of love potion. Now I'm really confused. I start grilling her about side effects, you know, headaches, dizziness, dry mouth, the works. She's adamant it doesn't do any of that. So I'm thinking, what the heck is going on here? I grab a box from her and hightail it home. I'm on a mission, people. I mix up the same dose as before in some booze and plop myself on the couch, waiting for it to kick in. Half an hour later, I'm feeling pretty jazzed up, like I could run a marathon or something. But it's nowhere near the craziness of that night with Russell. It's barely stronger than one of those energy drinks you get at the gas station. That's when it hits me like a ton of bricks. If it's not the pills, then what the heck turned me into a wild woman that night? I'm racking my brain, trying to remember every little detail. And then, BM, it's like a lightning bolt. The perfume. Russell gave me that fancy perfume, remember? I grabbed that bottle so fast you'd think it was made of gold. I give myself a little spritz and wait. Holy moly, it doesn't take long before I'm feeling like I'm on fire. Every inch of me is burning up. I barely make it to the shower, blast that cold water, and it takes a good half hour before I'm feeling normal again. I'm lying on my bed, totally wiped out when it all clicks. Every time Russell and I, you know, got together, he had this weird smell on him. I thought he just liked the same perfume, but nope. This whole thing was his twisted plan all along. It's totally gotta end, like right now. I'm seriously freaked out by how he's been acting. I mean, come on, what kind of creep tries to drug someone they just met? It's beyond messed up. The more I think about it, the more I'm like, ugh, I can't even look at his face anymore without feeling grossed out. So I decided, you know what? Enough is enough. I called him up and was like, we need to talk. Now, not later, not tomorrow right now. This idiot actually thought I was calling for a booty call or something. Can you believe it? The second he shows up, he's all over me, trying to rip my clothes off. I shoved him away and was like, dude, back off. That is so not why I asked you here. He keeps pushing it, saying stuff like, ah baby, we can talk later. Ugh. I completely lost it at that point. I grabbed the perfume bottle and slammed it on the table. I know you drugged me, you jerk. He tried to play dumb, but I could see the panic in his eyes. I was not in the mood for games, so I straight up told him I'd call the cops if he didn't fess up. That shut him up real quick. Then he tries to spin this whole story about how he's so in love with me and blah blah blah. As if that makes it okay. He had the nerve to grab my hand and say, I can give you more pleasure than your husband ever could. Gross. I yanked my hand away and stood up. We're done. This was a huge mistake and I'm not gonna betray my husband anymore. Get out. That's when things got really ugly. His eyes went cold and he started laughing in this super creepy way. Then he pulls out his phone and, oh my God, he had videos of us together. I thought I was gonna be sick. He's all, you don't want hubby seeing these, do you? I felt like the ground was falling out from under me. What was I supposed to do? I offered him money to delete everything, but he demanded an insane amount, like way more than we could ever afford. That's when it hit me. He didn't actually want the money. He wanted to control me forever. After he left, I just sat there feeling like the worst person in the world. I kept thinking and thinking and finally, I made the hardest decision of my life. I had to tell my husband everything. I was about to head up to Lou's office, right? And then, bam, out of nowhere, I see him coming out of the elevator with this total bombshell. We're talking blonde hair, blue eyes, the works. I was like, what the actual heck? I had to dive behind this huge plant pot to avoid being seen. 
so I'm sitting there, peeking out like some creepy stalker, watching them act all lovey-dovey. They're giggling and touching each other like a couple of teenagers. Even a blind person could see what was going on between them. I managed to pull myself together and decided to follow them. They hit up the mall across the street, did some shopping, and then, get this, they waltzed right into this sleazy motel nearby. My heart just dropped, you know? I planted myself in this bubble tea shop across the street and camped out for, like, four or five hours. Finally, they came out looking all disheveled. Lou gives her this big old kiss and they go their separate ways. But wait, it gets worse. Lou hangs around for a bit, makes a call, and who shows up? Russell. Freaking Russell. They're all buddy-buddy, laughing it up, and they come into MY Bubble Tea Shop. I'm hiding behind my menu, trying not to lose it. These jerks sit down super close to me, and I can hear every nasty word. Lou's going on about how Susan, that's the blonde, is the hottest thing he's ever seen. And Russell? He has the nerve to say, yeah, well, your wife's not bad either. They both crack up like it's the funniest thing ever. My mind is literally exploding. All this time, Lou knew about me and Russell? He actually set us up? I felt sick to my stomach. No wonder Russell was so bold that night. Lou was in on it the whole time. But it gets even more twisted. These scumbags start talking about getting me pregnant so Lou can divorce me and leave me with nothing. Can you believe it? Lou's willing to let another man knock up his wife just to get rid of me. It's beyond sick. I wanted revenge so bad, but I decided to give Lou one last chance. That night, I tried to talk to him about having a baby. His face just froze up and he shut me down cold. That was it. I was done. The next day, I got that perfume Russell gave me tested. Yep, date rape rug, just like I thought. I confronted Russell with the evidence. At first, he tried to play dumb, but when I played the recording from the bubble tea shop, he crumbled. I'll do anything, he begged. Just don't turn me in. I nodded slowly. Give me your phone, I said. And that, my friend, is where the real payback begins. S.O. after I did that, Russell, being the total sleazeball he is, tried to wrap his arms around my waist. Can you believe it? He was all like, baby, I know you deleted the videos, but can't we go back to how we were? I swear I won't film anything again. Ugh, gag me with a spoon. I was so grossed out, I shoved him away and was like, you, don't touch me. You make me want to hurl. You should have seen Russell's face. He froze like a deer in headlights. I guess he finally realized that a woman who's woken up to his BS is scarier than he thought. And let me tell you, I'm not the same pushover I used to be. But here's the thing, just getting back at Russell wasn't enough. The person I really had it out for was Lou. He was the mastermind behind all this crap. That's when I had this absolutely brilliant idea for revenge. I couldn't help but smirk a little. I turned to Russell and was like, hey, do this one thing for me and I promise I'll leave you alone. Russell looked at me like I'd grown a second head and was all for real. I just smiled and whispered my plan in his ear. His eyes got so big, I thought they'd pop out of his head. He was like, holy crap, you're evil. I just laughed and was like, please, compared to you guys, I'm an amateur. For the next couple of days, I had Russell act like everything was normal. Didn't want Lou getting suspicious, you know? On the third day, Russell handed me a USB drive with all the dirt I wanted. When I plugged it in, boom, there it was, Lou and that blonde chick Susan going at it. But honestly, I was so over it all by then, I just rolled my eyes. Russell was all nervous, like, so we're cool now, right? I just glared at him and was like, shut up and call Lou. Tell him it's go time. Poor guy was shaking like a leaf, but he did what I said. When he called Lou, he was all excited, saying he'd bring all our friends and family to catch me in the act. Little did he know, I was 10 steps ahead of him. I couldn't help but laugh to myself. After setting everything up in the bedroom, I headed to the coffee shop across the street. Time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I mean, can you imagine the look on Lou's face when he bursts in with everyone expecting to catch me, but instead sees himself on video? Oh man, this is gonna be epic. Lou came storming back with a whole posse. I'm talking familiar faces left and right. You should have seen their expressions. Some were fuming, others were shocked, a few looked suspicious, and some were just plain scared. And of course, there were those who were totally there for the drama. 
After they all went inside, I played it cool and waited about 10 minutes before casually strolling back home. As soon as I walked in, it was like a tornado had hit the place. My in-laws were sitting on the couch looking like they'd seen a ghost. I put on my best surprised face and was like, Mom, Dad, what's going on? Why do you guys look so upset? They just gave me this look and didn't say a word. Inside, I was totally doing a happy dance. I headed towards the bedroom and man, you could hear Lou screaming his head off. It was like a crescendo of panic in there. I figured the time was right, so I waltzed in and dropped the bomb. We're getting a divorce. Lou's face twisted up like he'd eaten a lemon. He started yelling, you're the one who cheated. You hooked up with that, that guy. You've got no shame. I couldn't help but laugh. I whipped out the test results I'd prepared and was like, you say I cheated? Where's your proof? Oh wait, you mean this report that shows you drugged me? Lou looked like he'd seen a ghost and stammered, H how long have you known? I just smirked and said, if you don't want people to know, don't do it in the first place. And let me tell you, Lou, this isn't over. Then I called the cops. When they showed up, I handed over the test results and the videos from Russell's phone. Before you know it, they found a ton of perfume laced with aphrodisiacs at Russell's place. That's when it hit me, while Lou was supposedly on that overseas business trip, he'd been hooking up with Russell and messing with innocent girls. Now that they were caught red-handed, Lou and Russell were bawling their eyes out, begging for forgiveness and a second chance. I just coldly told them to keep dreaming. Fast forward a bit and the court laid down the law. Lou got what was coming to him for his crimes. As for Russell, not only did he face legal consequences, but he also got kicked out of the country for good. When it was all said and done, I looked up at the clouds and took a deep breath. I felt free, you know? From now on, I'm living for myself. My happiness is what matters most. It's time for a fresh start.